What's happening at the Department of Justice? What a lot of people are describing tonight, what we've been talking about tonight, is a crisis, potentially an emergency in terms of the rule of law. Yes. You're praising the, 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 the bravery of those prosecutors who resigned. How, how serious is this as a crisis? This really is serious. You know, Susan Collins said that Donald Trump had learned a lesson. Yeah, he sure has learned a lesson. He has learned that he can do anything he wants. And evidently, there are a whole group of Republicans who are willing to lock arms around him and protect him from impeachment and protect him from consequences and to do his every bidding. This is a country that increasingly, a White House that is increasingly all about Donald Trump, not about the Constitution, not about the rule of law. And that is a crisis for our country. This is Elizabeth Warren calling out probably the only person shouldering as much of the country's blame as Trump himself, Susan Collins, which is a testament to the fact that her strategy of treating the American people like we have the memory of a goldfish is not exactly a winning one. And that's because for the umpteenth time in the Trump era, the main Republican has given given this president the benefit of the doubt that he decidedly does not deserve. The latest instance came in the immediate aftermath of Trump's acquittal in the Senate, where Collins said that Trump definitely won't seek foreign assistance again because of how traumatic his impeachment must have been. Are you confident that the president won't seek foreign assistance again? I believe that the president has learned from this case. What do you believe the president has learned? The president has been impeached. That's a pretty big lesson. Only to have Donald Trump himself come out the very next day and undermine that defense. When asked whether he made any mistakes related to Ukraine or whether he would have done anything differently, Trump didn't skip a beat before claiming outright that he'd done nothing wrong, saying, quote, it was a perfect call. In other words, and I really hope Susan Collins is sitting down for this, no, he did not learn any lesson from his impeachment. Not only that, he's still shouting the same excuses that were so convincingly disproven throughout the entire impeachment process. And that caused Collins to again appear on TV and tweak her statement a little, claiming now that yes, it was aspirational on her part, but again, she still, still thinks that he'll do the right thing. I would hope that he would not do it again. Did he and give he you any assurance that he would not do something like that again, except foreign help uh, in anything related to someone that might be running with him? Did you talk to him about it at all? I've had no conversations with him throughout the trial. So why do you have that feeling that he, he has changed, that he learned a lesson? Well, I may not be correct on that. It's more aspirational on my part. It's more that I, I hope that he's listened to the many voices in the Senate who uh, have pointed out that the call was very problematic. And since that moment, boy, was she wrong. Because here's the timeline. On February 5th, Trump was acquitted. On February 6th, Trump used the prayer breakfast to vow to seek revenge. On February 7th, Trump began firing witnesses, including his ambassador to the EU, Gordon Sondland, and Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman, both of whom testified the truth, which incidentally happened to be damning for Trump. He even fired Vindman's brother, another veteran, for the crime of looking like his twin. And after the president was done retaliating against witnesses, which, if you're wondering, is indeed a crime, on February 10th, Barr announced that he created a channel in which he could receive information directly from those conducting any investigations that may just be of interest to this administration. And surprisingly enough, one of the people he named specifically just so happened to be Rudy Giuliani. Well, Senator Graham says that uh, Rudy Giuliani will be providing the department information on related to Ukraine and the Bidens. What is the process for receiving this information? Who will uh, evaluate it? And uh, is this something that you feel you need to accuse yourself of? Well, as, as I've previously said, the, the, the DOJ uh, has the obligation to have an open door to anybody uh, who wishes uh, to provide us information that, that they think is relevant. We had uh, established a, an intake process in the field uh, so that uh, any information coming in about Ukraine could be carefully scrutinized by the department uh, and its uh, intelligence communi community partners uh, so that we could assess its provenance uh, and its credibility. And, you know, that is true for all information uh, that comes to the department relating to the Ukraine, including uh, anything Mr. Giuliani might provide.
In other words, Barr not only admitted to, but is encouraging the exact behavior, like conducting a sham investigation for dirt on the Bidens, that Trump just got impeached for. And finally, on February 11th, Trump took the unprecedented step of intervening in the case of his former advisor, Roger Stone, slamming the prosecutor's sentencing recommendation of seven to nine years in prison. And after his criticism, the DOJ, led by Bill Barr, immediately withdrew that recommendation and effectively halved it, calling now for three to four years. In other words, Bill Barr put on full display that the American justice system is going to be operated according to the whims of Donald Trump. That if he wants someone punished, it'll happen. If he wants someone cleared, it'll happen. And to give you an idea of just how egregiously dangerous that move was, all four prosecutors on the case quit, with one assistant U.S. attorney even leaving the government altogether. So while it's all well and good that Susan Collins is auditioning her whole seeing the best in people shtick, excuse the rest of us if we're done being taken for fools. No, Trump hasn't learned his lesson. No, Trump has no interest in learning his lesson. And no, Trump will never learn his lesson. He will continue to break the law, to consolidate power, to obstruct justice, to intervene in judicial proceedings, to protect his loyalists and to destroy his enemies. He is the single most destructive person ever to hold elected office in this country. But just as bad as him are the people who encourage him, like, say, a certain senator who fails to hold him accountable when she has the chance, in the hope that this time he'll totally, definitely learn his lesson.